How's it going, everybody? And welcome to Carport Sim Tour version two. I'm gonna jump right on into it. So we have three 55 inch TVs. And it actually goes back behind there, as you can see. And the same on this side. The windows are made out of black duct tape, which works, works for me. And it's the same on both sides. Uh, the panel is made out of cardboard. That's where it all started. So coming over here, here is my battery uh, and magneto uh, panel. So we have the magneto switch, battery and alternator, and my start. The only reason why I have a start switch is because this switch is added, um, this switch is from a fan, but it only had four positions. So <laughs> I just added a start switch and it works fine for me. Down here, we have the fuel tank select switch. Works good. Over here we have the, um, get down here. This is my uh, tip tank um, transfer switches. There's my stall warning light. That does work. My six pack is a 12.9 inch iPad Pro. And I actually can remove it. Let me see if I can, yep, I can do it with one hand. So I can slide this in and out um, because I do use that iPad for other other things. But the encoders, everything works fine. Moving on over here, we have a iPad mini running the engine management panel. And that one's stationary, that one doesn't move. Down here is the one of the newest items of the sim which is the prop wash simulation the autopilot panel works pretty good solid plug and play system no complaints there here we have the flap up and flap down indicator and the landing gear up and down indicator as well those lights do function here is the avionics panel we got the master switch here uh this is a custom made 750. This is a uh, an Amazon Fire tablet running um, Space Desk. And that's how I'm able to throw the 750 on. Got a couple of encoders and some buttons. Over here we have the battery test switch and gen test switch. It does absolutely nothing, it's just there. It looks cool. It looks like the same thing on the plane. Um, I couldn't find um, the information to get it working with the plane. So I just created it that way. So when I turn the switch, the lights come on. It, it does absolutely nothing though. So coming down here, here is the circuit breaker panels. I have one on each side. Um, they do absolutely nothing. These are just uh, butt connectors wire butt connectors from the auto parts store and on the back of a piece of cardboard here is my trim wheel nothing fancy but it does work here is my tpm setup and my ox fuel pump switch my tpms um custom made these are vape juice caps that I've painted to match each and one so throttle prop and mixture um, and they're connected to sliding potentiometers behind the panel here we have the flap switch I have to redo this whole thing um, I just haven't done it yet but I want to redo this whole little black part here but um here's the flap switch so it's, this plane has three positions, and that works as it should. 
the USB plugged in, it works. So I'm in here flying, need to charge up something. I got juice there. Here is my other added feature to the, um, the SIM. Originally, I just had a regular toggle switch for the gear. And um, I ended up going on Desktop Aviator and ordering this piece. And then they gave me the link to order the actual aircraft lock and toggle. So in order to actually make it go up, you actually got to pull. And the same thing, it won't go down until you pull. So that's pretty cool. Uh, here are all my light switches. So we've got the taxi landing. Here's my brake, just like the aircraft. I got my beacon, my nav, my strobe, and my P-Dot. Down here is just two pairs of the CH yoke or the CH product rudder pedals. Um, I do have plans for both of those. I'm actually thinking about linking those up. Um, so actually having dual link rudder pedals. Uh, I've been doing some skimming around the web and getting some ideas, but more to follow on that. Uh, carpet, just a cheap piece of carpet I bought from the home improvement store, Lowe's. And that's pretty much, oh, hold on, let's go up top. Here's my AC. Uh, these are just cardboard that I cut out. Um, this right here is actually the top part of an old Coolmaster case. Um, with the original fan and I snatched the fans well the ones that were still functioning um, and I got them all hooked to a power supply um, that's running off of a switch so when I hit the switch air goes off turn back on come back on um, I do however want to replace these in the future I want to add another one here and I want them to be matched and then I want to add a uh, I actually like a USB cooling system. Um, I've seen a couple on Amazon, but um, I want to do a little bit more research. But I actually, that's why I have the hole cut out up there. So it can actually pull in even colder air to keep it nice and cool in here. I mean, but these do all right for now. So but that's pretty much it for that. Um, there's one camera, there's two camera, and here is my third camera. So that's what I use to shoot youtube videos but if you watch my last video um i got that one and that one turned off for now just because my pc just can't handle all three of them at the time so i just record off of this one and then just record the video off the displays for itself so that is that and also i am coming up with something probably just another piece of black um material to cover that hole up so that's not being seen so stepping outside of the sim oh and while we're still in here are my handy dandy uh headsets as you can see there's grass stuck to it and that is because i actually use these when i'm working um i run a lawn care landscaping business and um so when I'm out there, that's what I use. So this is how it works. These are actually just your regular Bose um, QC45s. And here is a mic that I bought. I forget the name. I'm going to have to look up the company again that I bought this from. Um, but this is a mic attachment that hooks in to the headsets and then I'm using the Bose yeah matter of fact I'll show you real quick I'm using the Bose uh, volume USB system I don't know what you call it um, but that's how I communicate and listen inside the aircraft and while we're down here uh, up here is my that's my volume knob for my speakers in the back. And my subwoofer is right back there. So, um, so yep. Yeah, so when I go to work, I just take these with and um, I do my thing. And then when I come back, I hook it back up.
So that's that. Now out here, let me step back. This is what the sim looks like. Um, it's pretty ugly, <laughs> but hey, who cares about the outside as long as the inside looks like it's supposed to look right. So this is just um, backdrop material that was given to me. And that's pretty much what I've used um, to get everything covered. Here is the top. There's a hole I was talking about that I want to eventually put some type of other AC unit um, that actually pulls in even colder air. So here is one TV. It's just sitting on a two by four. And there are L brackets. There's one there. And then there's one there. And it's holding the TV in just fine. It's not, it's not going anywhere. And it's the same on both sides. Down here is the beast. <laughs> this is what runs the whole sim, y'all. This is an old, and I'll even show you. It's an old Dell. I've had this computer for a long time. I think I got this thing in like 2014. But it's a Dell um, with an i5-4440. I upgraded the PSU to an RM850X. Um, upgraded the RAM to 16 gigs versus the eight that it had. And I have a RTX 2080 Super with a bunch of SSDs. <laughs> uh, back here is where it all happened. Now the front TV is crudely mounted on some books because I, I'm still trying to figure out how to brace the front TV by itself. I do want to get it off of the books, but for now, it works. Um, there's the speakers, the power box there for all the hookups. And here is the action. That's about the best I can do. It was it was actually worse. The wire management it was it was bad because when I first started, I just started hooking stuff up, you know. So um, this is my second attempt at rewiring. So I have my ground and five volt um, junction box there, and then I'm running two Arduinos, as well as this is actually one of the circuit boards from the other CH yoke um, that I had. This is how I run my TPM. All I did was just tapped into the original TPM setup that was in the other casing. I just tapped into it and run my ground and my five volt there. And then my signal is coming in there. So that's how I do that. And that's about it. That's about it, y'all. Um, I don't think there's really much else about the sim. It's come a long way. And um, we still got a long way to go. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. Um, and we'll catch you on the next video. Cardboard Sim, checking out.